The Alliance of American Football was supposed to be the league of the future. It was supposed to last as a spring football league for development and NFL caliber players. That's what it was supposed to be, but it turned out the league folded in just its eighth week of football play. It was supposed to last three years. It was supposed to be the league that would change football forever. Now, let's get out the rumors uh, before we get into the video. Tom Dundon didn't come in to steal the technology. The technology was owned by MGM, and when I refer to technology, I'm referring to the app, the gambling app, that was supposed to be revolutionary, but obviously didn't make it through the first season. Also, Dundon wasn't some sort of 007 double agent from the XFL or from the NFL. Um, he was just a guy who was at first interested in the Alliance of American Football. But to get the whole story, we have to start from the beginning. The first mistake made by the Alliance of American Football became before this season even started. They weren't making money off TV contracts, and they were getting good viewers from their TV audiences, beating out the NBA in its first night and going toe-to-toe -to -toe with NHL hockey throughout the weeks. Also, they had a lack of big corporate sponsors. Big names weren't tied to this league. Can you name any big corporate sponsors tied to the AAF that you saw ads for or advertisements, maybe on uniforms on the field? I can't. Also, there was poor fan engagement. Uh, I'll use Arizona fans as an example. Uh, game times were changed without notifying fans. Fans showed up to the game at a different time because the, the time was changed for TV schedules. Many fan bases have made it vocal that they were not exposed to the AAF as they should have been before the season started and during the season. Now the first two weeks of the Alliance were pretty good, but after week two, news came out of payroll being missed, and this would prove to be devastating for the Alliance. Not only is it bad to have this news come out, it created a conception that this league was doomed to fail, and it definitely lost interest from fans and potential investors. Reggie Fowler, who was the first big investor in the Alliance of American Football pulled out his investment and the AAF was in trouble. Now desperate times equals desperate measures and in this case they needed a miracle investor and his name was Tom Dundon pledging 250 million dollars over three years. But here's the catch. He wanted unilateral control of the board of directors which ended up being a huge mistake for the Alliance of American Football. Charlie Ebersole should have known. If you're ever trying to build up a company that you've been working on for many years of your life, you should never give up a majority of it for any amount of money. But that's what he did. Ebersole needed to be the primary investor, much like Vince McMahon in the XFL. As weeks moved on, Ebersole and Polian realized Dundon did not share the same vision for the AAF. Originally, the league was supposed to be a feeder league for the NFL, and by year three, possibly work as an NFL minor league. The league wasn't going to break even in year one, like most companies, in this case, the league. And Tom Dundon wanted all of this in year one by the middle of the season. As you can see, this was a huge problem for the Alliance. Dundon wanted the NFLPA to reach an agreement to get practice squad and third string players to come play for the Alliance of American Football. As you can imagine, they weren't going to budge. And there was no reason for them to. Dundon had zero leverage on the table. His negotiating tactic was to threaten to fold the league, which was a horrible way of working with the NFLPA. By this time, Ebersol could do nothing but sit and watch. And as of now, Ebersol and Bill Polian 
don't even know why Dundon really shut down the league. Dundon invested 70 of the 200 million that he was supposed to pledge, but he did not get what he wanted, and this caused him to pull out. In fact, Dundon came out and publicly said he would shut down the league if the NFLPA wasn't willing to work with him. Then about a week later, during some team practices, Everyone around the league was informed the league was done. Tom Dundon shut it down even though there was a line of investors ready to step in, take his place, and even finish out the season. And just like that, the alliance was gone. Unfortunately for spring football fans, this league had an incredible shot at making it in the long run. The quality of football was good, not great, but it was better than many other leagues, and the talent was there. And the talent was there, most importantly, in its first year. A league that was supposed to last would definitely garner even more talent and more attention and become bigger and better than the year before. Unfortunately, Tom Dundon did not want to stick to this business plan. And when you take a look back at the Alliance, it had all the tools for success, but it made one crucial mistake. The board took the money and gave unilateral control to an investor who they thought had the same idea as them, but ended up having a far different vision. The league attempted to pull a total 180 by week nine, and it crashed and burned. At a first glance, the Alliance of American Football was a miserable attempt to create a spring football league. But after an in-depth analysis of the rise and fall of the Alliance, this league was a lot closer to living on than most people think. This was the Alliance of American Football. The AAF could have been a league to make it for multiple years. It could have been one of the great spring leagues in America. But unfortunately, their business decisions crashed the league into the ground and it didn't make it past year one. Let me know what you think was the main reason for the Alliance of American Football folding. I'd love to hear it in the comment section below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hit that bell for notifications so you can watch more videos from the end zone. Thank you.